Does it sound okay? <laughs> that sounds, wow, that's really sound dreamy. Good? Right up on the mic, right. it's extra dreamy. New Hampshire's White Mountains Hut Traverse is an approximately 50-mile rocky and rugged route with roughly 17,000 feet of elevation gain that links all eight of the Appalachian Mountain Club huts. Hikers begin at Carter Notch and head west, taking on the northern Prezies early in the effort, and tag each hut along the way, finishing at Lonesome Lake in Franconia. There are no official rules, yet a common goal is to do this in less than 24 hours to make the traverse quote-unquote official. Huts themselves serve as fantastic aid stations where hikers can fill up water, buy baked goods, use the bathroom, etc. Hikers have been lodging fastest known times on this route, going back until at least the 1930s with the current FKTs in the staggering 10 to 12 hour range. If you're ever attacked by them, they're like, and it's like first, stay low. And they're like, get underneath the bear's grass. Try to get into like almost where it would hug you. And if you have a knife, start stabbing it. And it goes through like, <laughs> like seven steps. And then it goes step eight. Go back to step one because you f***ing die. <laughs> <They're> like... <laughs> Let's pick up from right here. You're telling a bear story. And uh, my hair looks great. <laughs> Your hair looks great. Tim's mustache looks amazing. Josh's calves. <laughs> of course. Well, tell your story. Is it fair to say, Nick, that of the things we've now done, you know, fourth, fifth, however you want to call it, event, but we kind of knew this was going to be our hardest. Oh, without a doubt. As such, we all took it a lot more seriously as far as, like, the mental prep. When we went into, like, the Pemi Loop or the Presidential Traverse, for example, I feel like you can, we almost felt like we could wing that. At least I did personally, and the Presidential Traverse, I mean, uh, the Pemi, definitely put a little bit more respect in my training and understanding of what you're getting into. Um... But this, there was no, there was no overestimating on how everybody, this was the hardest thing for sure. We had to hike an hour and a half to the start point. And that was, that was a lot of people's like day trip. <laughs> 1236, 1237, Thursday, June, what's the date? 17th. So we signed into the logbook, Tim, we saw Tim signing in uh, to make it official. Here we are. Nick gives us a, a, a pep talk. All right, guys. All right, Nick, let's bring it in. We're, we're, we're going to do the star, right? Nick's going to give us a pep talk. Guys, <laughs> this was the idea at the campfire. Yeah. <laughs> this, is our, this is our down year after the Pemi Loop. We're taking yeah. it easy this year. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Let's not die. Let's take it easy. Let's have some fun and check out the scenery. That's it. Go. Woo! <laughs> There's such a wide variety of strategies that people did. Like, there was people that started at midnight, and then there was people that start in the middle of the afternoon or earlier in the morning. And I think you're making so many assumptions on how fast you're going to be moving, what time you're going to finish, like all of these things that you do the best you can. And I think uh, what we started at this time because we wanted to really banking on the next day and like trying to get through the, the nighttime when we were feeling relatively good instead of hitting that wall. We had, I mean, minimum you need three cars with this group of guys to get through there um, with a midpoint dropway and everything like that to play it smart. There's so many choices with something at this scale in terms of like, yeah, the cars, what you're packing, what you're bringing. There's an enormous amount of it's decisions. It's like how much time can you spend dedicating to thinking about that one decision. Like the start time was, seems in and of itself as like one of the most important things. But then when you lump it into, well, what time do we have to get up in the morning to get there earlier? And like, now you're losing sleep the night before. And like, it, it's just such a, a very long equation that you're trying to balance. Yeah, this gorgeous is, is the scene oh, right here, amazing. right at the start. You great great way to start this is, and, and it's an easy start. It's all downhill coming from the Carter Hut. And you know exactly what terrain you're going down because you literally just walked up it before. We, we went up there, we spent maybe, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes just kind of relaxing, getting ready to really start the day mentally, prep for it, fill up your water bottles. Come back down you're at a parking lot and then here you see we're, we're running down a road and we're like in the middle of an actual place where people are and next thing you know you're gonna, you're about to duck into the woods and see literally like nobody for a long time that part was really fun because it was still so early that i think we all feel oh you see like in the video how many smiles we have on our faces and stuff and your clothes are all clean and it's just everybody's happy uh, 
So it was kind of a neat little feature. I actually, I really enjoyed that part. It was maybe just like a half mile downhill or something, but in this downhill, right? Like running from that. Uh, yeah, literally all downhill, downhill down, down to the road. I don't want the pressure of having to keep up with you. <laughs> so here we meet uh, a woman who works at the huts, uh, the hut system, and she's heading up to Madison Hut. And just by chance, a couple of the guys had to use the bathroom. So we ran across this hiker, and just as conversations kind of tend to start up around a trailhead, we end up um, sort of discussing what, which route, we weren't sure which route we were going to take to get up to the Madison Hut. And it turned out she was going the Madison Gulf Trail. The more which, direct and, air quotes, quicker route. <laughs> air quotes, yes. She looks very <laughs> aw shucks in this video and in person. She was very like, I oh, I don't know if I can keep up with you guys. You yeah, look I was fast. Just gonna say, I don't know whether I'm insulted or whether it was a compliment that she's like, she took a look at us and was like, oh, these guys are going to move. We like, have all the gear. We have all the gear. Up with you. We have all the gear, and, all the watches. Or whether she was like, these fools, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make them just. We'll never know. We're at decision making time. Yeah. Oh, great golf. Great golf for us. Good. Yeah. I guess you don't have that, that sprint up here. Either way, the pace should run. <laughs> well, I mean, you have to. Keep... I was like, wait, wait. There's slower guys behind me. I know. You're I got you tore ACL you're... like two months ago. Yeah. So our guy. <laughs> we're not helping scrimped. confidence here. <laughs> if you want to go this way, our guy asked, so is, "That's the route we're going." So. Let's go whichever way she's not going. If I think back to all my time in the White Mountains, that's top three of my favorite trails that I've ever like been oh, wow. on. I mean, it, yeah, it was been super fun. Right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Wait, does it cut off elevation? Is it the quickest way? It's the most direct route. To yeah. The yeah. For sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Most direct route. Like the this. fly crows, Tim. Like as the, fly, the crow flies. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah, it's a hard trail, but I don't know. Oh, I see your sign. It's short like but steep. Better off going short but steep. Yeah. More gradual. Just if you hear some whimpering, ignore it. <laughs> she was moving. I mean, you can't quite tell on video as always. But we're, I mean, not at this very moment, but we're hiking at a very steady pace. Oh, there we go, man. Oh, oh, see oh that my hair. God. That oh. Hair. Just a guy in the mountains. On video, it doesn't really show, but when you're out there and you're walking by people, like yeah. they're standing Direct. still um, and they're taking breaks. And you're, yes. It's not only that, it's just you're going large stretches of miles and covering a lot of elevation without taking a real break. Sean Patrick's that. carrying sandwiches, dangling from his pack. I mean, <laughs> if you're hiking at this pace for, you know, we're, we're setting out for a 24 hour hike. So that pace was formidable. I mean, I think at one point you caught up to me. I, I'm not sure if, if I got it on video or not, but I remember we separated a few little points along this stretch, just like oh, this. Go, and we like, stop and somebody catches up. But you were like, we just did a 15 minute mile and we're going uphill. Like that's, that's faster than what we'd planned yep. for. You still for overnight. We hit red, and I think all trails are different reports. It's a, it's a little tricky to find this trail. You wouldn't want to do it at night and if you didn't know your way. Give very SPH well. credit. Uh, walked past the trail one time, and, and he diverted back, Did looking at it? signs like the um, the crampon scratches on rocks and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I to learned find the trail. Yeah. Yep, I was right behind um, this woman at the huts and SPH, and I was watching them track stuff. And I have to say, the crampon thing, the moss kind of worn off of rocks like i felt like i was learning a little so. bit of how people i don't think i've done a whole lot of trails that aren't obvious in the white i think that pace up that steepness that early on did take a little bit of a toll it it, it did um you know for for me, it definitely a physical toll. Um, I enjoyed it enough, though, that I felt like it was yeah, okay. But good point. The, the stretch after that, after the Madison Hut, was definitely the time that I was struggling the most as far as mentally. And, and it was funny. I talked about it out loud. This is where, so early. Where I was like, oh, gosh, that midway point car. Because exactly that. Like, the, yeah. the bite that you had to take next. It's like the whole, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, there's a lot of elephant it's left. pretty steep. <laughs> That's the top. <laughs> oh, no, I got sap on my hand. Uh, I got to turn around. For a month of oh, June, that route, was unbelievably hot, right? It's a record setting heat mm -hmm. in June. The week before, it was in like the mid 90s. Exactly. Humidity that was just I impressive. think we all knew. I watched an auto road. Had we gotten a 90s degree day in humidity, there's just no way we could pull off Sorry. that hot traverse, a 24 hour effort at a solid pace two things that really worked for me on this that mm -hmm. helped were the poles poles and poles like that was 
I started them too late in the pet me loop and they saved me there. I started with them here and you can see me having them out at every single scene that I'm I'm in. It, it, it got really steep. I don't know, I found the tough ones to start really steep, but watch how much of it in when I'm using them, watch how much my upper body is taking those upper steps. And then on the down, mm -hmm. how much you're bracing yourself from all of those collisions. Every time you hit the ground on a like an unsupported step that's further than six inches, like it's a collision with your body, and that's your back, that's your knees. Yes, it went on way longer than I thought it was going to. So here we are at the first hut, yep. Madison hut here. I guess it's the second hut. You start at Carter Notch, so it's technically hut number two. I know what you're saying. I won't credit for two, but you're right. <laughs> two out of the eight are down. Conquered. Love it. Eating whenever anyone takes out food, yeah. especially when you're in a that big was your group mantra. like this. That was yeah. like, eat it. Just take three peanuts take you know whatever yeah. a gummy that they're taking out whatever it is that they're having just have mm -hmm. a little bit of whatever anybody yeah. was offering i think that was good advice um at the huts you carried early on yeah buying carrot cake and buying like whatever and <laughs> a huge can i like that it costs very little to do yeah, this totally when you get into bigger adventures in like you know, mountaineering or like, I would love to go climb a mountain for real, but I, I'm like, I don't have $10,000 to just throw around for that. Like you wear the same shoes that you're running in your trail running in mm -hmm. this. Good point. Same hydration pack that you're probably already having. If you don't, that's like 70 to a hundred dollars for a pretty decent one. Like that's fine. You like, and that's a really good one. Um, grab your food that you're comfortable with eating, which is stuff that, uh, you know, marginally, um, is, is adding on to that and then a, a parking pass which is like three dollars and fifty cents or free depending on the parking lot sure. that you find into yeah it's donate donate three dollars every time you get to a hut and get unlimited snacks from their like homemade oh, vegetarian right vegan gluten-free carrot cake and then uh so proceed on for under a hundred dollars and yeah. uh, and i think that's another thing is like or enter the new york marathon and spend 350 dollars <laughs> I mean, like, so, like, oh, here was the Appalachian Trail through hiker guy, and it's funny. We were like, "How are you doing?" He's like, "Great, no feeling good about two more weeks." He's like, I'm "Lonely." <laughs> Ass. That's what like we did on the way up here. I think I got like 23, 24 miles yesterday. Oh, it's a fun nice. adventure that's that's accessible, but not. And that makes it even more special for people who do it because the whole idea that like anybody could do this is like you don't have to qualify. Exactly. You don't have to do like you just have to yeah. do it. And like that, that makes it a little bit, I feel like a little bit more special sometimes when you complete something that's difficult like this. I myself a lot. That's the only hard part. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine. But the miles are... Dude, they'll take you at the hut. Matt, there's a hut at Madison. How we going? How do you like the New Balances? I was looking at them. I like these a lot. They're they're a ton of cushion. Yeah, well, you want to get around snow. that little snow here, right? Rob is a machine. That, that guy moves. It, like he really does. Never yeah. even thought for a second about Rob when, like, as far as like when you're moving. Yeah. And uh, and that's he's just like such a such a machine. There's Tim Troy. Remember we were commenting on yeah. him with his just, arms like, behind he's him, like, like he's, he's waiting. He's next in line at the bank. <laughs> or his coffee's ready. He's waiting. <laughs> Where we were to be there at that time of day, you just hiked yeah. through the well, mountains to get there. And this part of the day was awesome. And I'll tell you, like, there's, awesome. there's two things I want to make. Like, if you look in the distance, you can see that little white. That's the hut that we're getting yeah, to. Yeah, we're in the lakes of the clouds. And you're yep. like, we're there, we're there. And we're like, no, oh, man, yeah, that is like a 45-minute to an hour hike. Like, yes. it took... It just didn't get yeah. any closer, no matter how hard you hiked. And at this, this point of the day, stretch. it was gorgeous. And don't get it me was. wrong, but you it started to get cold. The temperature was dropping. Yeah. And part of that's the calorie burn that you're mm -hmm. getting into. You've been out here for a long time. We've been out there for 
nine ish hours probably at this point between the hike in or whatever mm -hmm. exposed out in the mountains um josh right impervious to cold that guy never threw on like tights like even after we leave legs of the clouds you'll see it but that guy impervious he's made of titanium he's a <laughs> toughest toughest guy I probably ever met josh Wrights. and it all starts with his calves <laughs> It's like God, his knee, God knee swallowed a grapefruit. It's like his knee swallowed a grapefruit. <laughs> Just in anticipation of the cold coming. I want to stay ahead of it. Because I don't want to put them on on the trail and everything. This time of day. This was there. like, none of us could believe this was actual real life that we were in right now. Um, it was just like seeing the sunset yeah. and, and look at the colors. This is like paintings that you see. And, and yeah. even the rocks, not even the sky. Look at the rocks. I and I remember that as it got really deep into the sky, um, it was red, it was very red. And all of the rocks have uh, some, you know, different types of like shiny, mm -hmm. whatever, I'm, I'm not a geologist, I don't know the name of it, but yeah. the red the shine off of it. And it was like, you would see these little dots of red everywhere and it almost made the landscape match the sky. And it was oh, just it's, unbelievable. It's beautiful. just feel like you've stepped into some sort of alternate reality because it's the moon it has this no is the moon right yeah. here this is literally the moon <laughs> you're just like dumbstruck it's amazing what an awesome day <laughs> yeah yeah the same reason I loved the whole yeah. Cog Railway and coming up yeah, to the Lakes exactly. of the Clouds here is by typical hiking standards, you're down to your car now. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, you, you, you kind of tend to try to want to be off the mountain. Oh, the nightfall. fact that we were out there, I felt like we were such outliers. People were looking at us yeah. being like, what, where, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. So that made it all the more special when you're sort of doing something that feels a little different. Yep. Absolutely. I saw that right away. I whispered to Rob, I was like, this is going to break like three souls easily. The fact that we got this sunset as we entered Lakes of the Clouds hot was just, it was just like one of those moments. I, I mean, watch this. Like, I don't, I, there's nothing to say. Yeah. And to see it in real life is a thousand times better. And then you come on this hut that was built on the top of this mountain and is not easy to get to. And you just spent all day getting there. And all you, I mean, at this point, this was, this was one of the harder points because we were deep into it, but we were nowhere near finished. No. We weren't even halfway at no, this point. We were far halfway. from halfway. Yep. Um, and we were, you know, down. and we were starting to like realize how big of an event. And, and I think this goes back to the commentary in the beginning of we never underestimated how hard this was. And this is where it really sunk in that, holy crap, this is hard. The purity of the whole decision to do these things, too. It's like, yeah, it's not about the metal. It's, it's like, we're doing this for camaraderie and just for the sake of, like, trying something hard. Not a bad sunset, huh? So we can meet those old guys one day. It was like, one time I did this. I <laughs> used to walk uphill both ways to school. We're like, well, Pretty so do we. Pretty timing, huh? The sun going down right as we get here. That's awesome. Before you get, go in, let me get your shot of you by the side. Go ahead. We walked into that Lakes of the Clouds hut, yes. and immediately they saw the size of our group, and they were like, what do you guys want? You want some pancakes? You want some lasagna? I think we have some salad left over. 
It's not a race. It's not a big organized thing. But as soon as they hear what you're attempting, they're like on board. They're your crew. And they were like, here, your crew, let's yeah. go get the lasagna from out back. We'll give you the whole tray. I really actually enjoyed, though, the nighttime. Like when, when we yeah. got into the night, it, it just it, it took it to another level. You're, you're at a place that not many people ever go, which is in the middle of the deep woods wilderness at night. I've only done night hiking now twice, and it was this and the Pemi Loop. And I absolutely love it. I, I think it's it's that feeling of like the rest of the sort of world is, is asleep or anyone in this time zone is typically comfortable home in their bed or oh, the sitting on the Let couch. Let me just say like oh, right we're already now. already at mitzvah. Yeah. Everybody. Awesome. It's like such a memorable and amazing spot is uh, you have to earn your way to get there. Is that the last of my video? That's all. I, I'm gonna have to figure out a better way to end that. I stopped filming. <laughs> you and I should just talk over like a color bars. <laughs> you know I mean? Start like, over. <laughs> we'll, we'll just comment on stuff again. It was fun when we got to the mid spot. That's when we knew that we weren't going any further. And it's amazing. It was like it, it was a, a thousand pounds lifted off of you because you knew that today was done. But there's also the whole part of like, now you're starting to think about, did we have it? Like, what could we have done differently? What could I do better? Mm-hmm. And again, to your point, like what worked? Um, and, and thinking about it, uh, um, the something we all agreed on, and it's the same thing that we said during the presidential traverse when we did it, it's like less downtime, like less stopping yeah. at the like huts and things like that and whatever. And that, that does clear out a lot of white noise. So in general, I think sometimes it, it's just, not your day to do something. And I'll give a lot of credit to this group of guys is at some point when you're spending enough time out in the woods and wilderness, you're going to have to say, no, like this is too much. We've, we're going to do something that we're not comfortable doing or getting Mm -hmm. out of. And that lends the credibility to go and do it again. And the experience between all these guys, and you know what, we just didn't have it. And as much as maybe we could have, I, the chances of, of us doing it. And then the chances of maybe, somebody getting into a really rough spot, really remote in the wilderness where there's no ability to drop. And like, yeah, now you're going to be out there for 40 hours. And are you, are we prepared for that? And yeah. I think the best bet was to say, let's go back. Let's go have beers until 4.30 in the morning instead of running until 4.30 <laughs> in the morning. And then, uh, and then like reevaluate what we could do differently next time. We had a drop car at the midway point and, and I kind of... I think I called that out or like six weeks uh, or so. That makes it really hard to, to yeah, keep I, I, going. I kind of knew based on the little bit that Sean had planned out with the splits, I had a feeling that I was just like, wow, we're going to get there around 11 o'clock or midnight and we're halfway and we've covered the northern and now southern presidentials. It's a whole lot of wear and tear in the body that I just had this feeling that like, what are the chances of seven of us all being like willing to continue at that point? So I would add just by putting a drop car there, I think psychologically like made it like a possibility to stop there, which was very compelling combined with we had rented an Airbnb Hmm. to your point where I think we were just going back to sleep on the ground. We weren't going back to sleep on the ground. So I think we all kind of had that gravitational pull to a fridge full of beers and a comfortable place to go. So one of my just takeaways about this first attempt is I think you hit the nail on the head is um, if I were to do this again, and I hope to soonish, is approach it a bit like a race, which maybe is less fun, but a little bit more kind of like I think to do it, you actually have a, have to have a little bit more of a race mm-hmm. mentality of like these huts are literally like just like pit stops, you know, and you can't stop and take photos. You know, I'm clowning around on the, you know, uh, cog railway and stuff. We're just sort of like, we're kind of approaching it like we've done all these other things, but there was no time element. So I think, I think if I were to do it again, it's a little less fun, but a little more like down to business and you're in your like hardcore pacing. That was awesome watching this video. It, it reminds you how just like lucky we are to do that stuff. It really is. Yeah. And we've been so lucky, man. You look at that footage and the weather I look back and stuff, on that yeah, with, with com- like complete and incredible fondness of that day.